When you need to buy something, a cold brew, a toaster, even a house, you can see how much it costs and comparison shop to find the best price. But there's one purchase this doesn't apply to, and it's one of the most expensive items a person ever has to buy, a car. So the process of buying a car is my own personal version of hell. Look up the screen, you see the price is different from the price for the car that you wanted. So we've broken down the costs and I'm like, hey, what's that right there, that $2,500? And they're like, oh, that's the blazer cost. Just left out a couple of things, uh, rust proofing. Rust proofing? Transport charge, storage surcharge, additional overcharge, finder's fee. Finder's fee was on the lot. Yeah, that's right. Consumers are at an enormous disadvantage when they're going to buy a car. And it's not by accident, it's by design. This is a story about why buying a car is a total nightmare and what we can do to level the playing field so that getting ripped off by car dealers becomes a thing of the past. In 2010, Congress had a great opportunity to rein in some of the worst practices by car dealers, but they missed it. Congress adopted the Dodd-Frank Act in the wake of the financial crisis and created the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Of course, the dealer's lobby activated heavily. They poured in a lot of resources and a lot of money to making sure that the CFPB did not have jurisdiction over some of their practices. And it worked. Dealers walked down the halls of Congress saying things like, we're not Wall Street, we're Main Street. They tried to paint themselves as small business owners so that they wouldn't be subject to the same regulation and scrutiny that other big banks were. That was a huge win for them, and it was a real miss by Congress. And the current system, where the cards are already stacked against the consumer, is also racially inequitable. Research has shown that minority consumers pay more for a car in almost every aspect of the transaction. Black and brown people have been quoted higher prices for the car itself, paid more for interest rates to finance the purchase of a car, and in some recent litigation from the FTC, cases showed that dealerships were charging more to black and brown people for the add-on products and services in the car. The good news is the Federal Trade Commission has proposed a rule that would help level the playing field for consumers. We'll get into the specifics a little later. But first, let's take a look at how the dealership side operates. We found a car dealer in Florida whose business philosophy has evolved over the years. Joshua Stewart works at his dad's dealership, Earl Stewart Toyota, in Lake Park, Florida. Today, Earl Stewart Toyota is known for their transparent pricing, but 20 years ago, that wasn't the case. The car business when I was a kid, Honestly, it was the last thing I ever thought I would do. In the old days, we conducted ourselves much like every other car dealership you, you see today. I've been in the car business, a car dealer, since 1968. I did business the way almost every other car dealer did. It was uh, bait and switch advertising. And there was advertising that was sort of meant to get them in the door, and then the actual, you know, less pleasant facts are, <laughs> are revealed after the customer's already you know, committed themselves to a certain point. My father was in the business before me, and I kind of just glided into it behind him. I thought that's the way all business was done in the car business. I changed the way I did business gradually. It, uh, it came for a, a variety of reasons. Maybe the biggest influence uh, was my sons. I have three sons, and none of them were particularly interested in the business. I decided to change the way I did business and my son said, okay, if we can do the business transparently and honestly, uh, we would love to come to work for you. So that's the reason we're a family business today. All of our cars are listed online at the price that you'll actually pay for the car. And so you can get an out the door price on every vehicle we have on our website, you know, itemized down to the last penny. When you get here, the customer will find that nothing changes. So the fact that our, our salespeople aren't commission based uh, they're paid on the volume of the cars they sell. That puts them in a much better position to truly help the customer and not just try to steer them to the greatest profit. Earl Stewart Toyota has been operating transparently for over 20 years, but what about smaller, newer dealerships that want to do business honestly? I do think that good, transparent dealers who don't use deceptive advertising are at a, are at a strong disadvantage in the marketplace because it, it makes them look like their cars that are advertising are more expensive than a comparable car at another dealership. The benefit of doing business transparently um, and without deceptive advertising is the fact that you will have half of your customers who are more likely to return to you. They're more likely to refer their friends and family to you. So I look at my business in the long run, instead of how much money are gonna make in 
2023, how much money am I going to make in the next 20 years? Now, I might not be here to cash in, but my sons will and my grandsons will. Too many companies you see on Wall Street live from 30 days to 30 days or year to year. I don't care who I outsell this month or next month uh, or maybe even this year. I know that if I continue to do that and my repeat business is as strong as it is, stronger than any dealer I know, by continuing to build my customer base, sooner or later I will be selling more cars than anybody else. The FTC has proposed a rule that would make car shopping at all dealerships more transparent, not just dealerships that choose to do right by their customers. So the two things that the FTC is trying to address are pretty straightforward and they're pretty simple changes. One is requiring dealers to be more upfront and honest about the price of a car. Telling people what the price of the car is online, being more honest about the fees, the mandatory charges, things like that, so that people can meaningfully comparison shop and say, this dealership is charging X, this dealership is charging Y, which one do I wanna to go to? The FTC is also looking at the pervasive and really problematic practice of deceptive and worthless add-on products and services. We've seen a host of ways that dealers abuse consumers in the sale of add-ons. And the FTC is really trying to make it easier for consumers to understand what they're getting, easier for them to say no, and to stop making consumers feel pressured or obligated to have to buy these worthless products. As I mentioned, the FTC can put an end to these shady practices, but they won't act without massive public pressure. Let the FTC know you want this rule enacted at the link below so we can say goodbye to the days of needing to go to battle when you need a new car. That undercoating, that's a ripoff, isn't it, David? Oh, we don't even know what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more stories like this one, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more More Perfect Union in your feed. And if you have any ideas for stories that you would like for us to investigate, just drop them in the comments below.